Hello everyone, I am Wei Chao from the FAE team of Syncom. It's nice to meet you again. In recent years, the Internet of Things technology has been widely applied in various corners of human life. With 2G and 3G going offline, the CAT1 module has become a popular topic in the field of medium and low-speed IoT due to its advantages such as low latency, low power consumption, good mobility, good network coverage, high cost effectiveness, and the ability to access traditional LT base stations. There are often customers who find it difficult to choose between the standard ATSW version or the Open SDK version during the initial stage of CAL1 project selection. Many customers who are suitable to use Open SDK but do not consider Open SDK due to a lack of experience and the limited documentation that make using Open SDK to start very difficult. Today we will learn about the knowledge related to Open SDK and solve everyone's troubles with CAL1 Open SDK. The Open SDK can save the need for MCU. The module reserves a portion of RAM and flash for end users while ensuring the normal functionality of the original modem part. Based on this, the Open SDK allows the module to work both as a modem and as the MCU. Simply put, it means buying a module and giving it to a microcontroller for free and saving cost. Open SDK can save one main control chip and the entire equipment can achieve higher integration. Layout can be better and easier. At the same time, PCBA can be smaller. Open SDK can offer cost effectiveness and consequently enhance the core competitiveness of the product. After understanding the advantages of Open SDK, let's talk about the conditions and limitations of it. Using Open SDK requires some experience in SW development and debugging. Understanding the development architecture of modules and familiarity with the development environment, the development cycle may be longer compared to traditional standard solutions. As the remaining resources of the module are limited, Open SDK is not suitable for projects with high requirements for memory space, computing power, and external hardware resources. At the same time, it is necessary to conduct in-depth evaluations based on the project's needs. Firstly, clients who have already used Open SDK in projects. Secondly, projects with less requirements for memory space, computing power, and peripheral resources. Or projects with relatively small code size of around a few hundred kilobytes. In addition, it is also possible to try Open SDK if sufficient development time is reserved for later debugging. Firstly, Customers without experience in Open SDK need to assess the difficulty of development first and cannot make KSD decisions. Customers who have a tight schedule for project development cycle should consider using traditional AT command solutions for mass production first and then considering Open SDK. Customers who already have an indispensable high computing power MCU on their own products are not recommended to use Open SDK. Next, I will use the Open SDK package of ASR CAT1 module as an example to demonstrate how to begin using Open SDK. Firstly, let me familiarize you with our Open SDK kit. We will find these unrecognized ports after getting the development board and powering on the module. We come manually at the drivers individually. or with one key. After the ports work normally, we can start development and debugging work. When you get the package for development, unzip the firmware first. It contains two folders, SDK and doc. SDK is our development environment, and in the doc directory is our hardware and software guidebook. Please read these documents first. Under the hardware catalog is the reference design for the open SDK of the corresponding hardware model, and some of the GPIO and peripheral multiplexing information is also in this document. The software catalog has a guidance document for each function block, which can be reviewed. Please familiarize yourself with compiling, debugging, 
downloading and demo before you operate them, so that you can understand and familiarize yourself with our development environment faster. Open the development directory. You can see that the SC app is the source code of the demo we refer to. The SC config directory contains some configuration options for app compilation. The SC SDK images directory contains the dependency files needed for packaging. SC tools mainly contains the tools we will use for compilation and packaging. The files starting with build are the compilation script files corresponding to each model. Next, let's directly demonstrate how to compile. Open CMD directly in the compile directory. Then make and compile the specifying submodel version by build command. Here, we choose A767 to EFASE. After the compilation, you can find the generated firmware package SCA767 to EFASE 16R in the target directory. Find the newly generated firmware and use the burning tool to burn it. Open a boot and directly select the path where the firmware was just generated. The other options are default. Click start and power on the module again to burn it. Open the debugging tool. Select the modem port. And you can use the AT command to query the current version to determine whether the burning is OK. Connect the serial port of the module and power it up again. The serial port will display a visual interface operation. You can test the functionality of various parts of the module by selecting numbers and quickly grasp how to use various functions by combining the demo source code of the module. Open the CAD Studio tool and choose to parse the log online. Firstly, configure the device that receives the log. Here we choose the DIAC port. Then configure the corresponding MDB. MDB can be found under the corresponding model folder in the SDK images directory of the SDK. APP related logs can be filtered out using the log tools log filter. For example, when filtering is turned on, the log tool only sees AT command related logs. More detailed information on the related operations performed by the module can be seen in real time from the underlying log. With these basics in mind, Let's get familiar with our Hello World in practice. Firstly, we open the SDK directory. Click on application.c. You can see that in the static wait application function, we have configured many tasks and the task placed in this function will be called by the module during runtime. Here we take a look at the hello world function being called and make a modification to it for our intuitive experience. Here, we will change catalog printing to the content we want to print and synchronize the serial port to output this field. We need to use a print interface here. When using the interface, it needs to be declared first. And it should include the corresponding header file, otherwise the compilation will report an error. We will annotate the symptom demo test for our observation. OK, let's see if the changes take effect.
repair, the compiler reported an error because my interface was not declared. Let's refer to how it is used in demo and modify it accordingly. Here, we continue to report an error. We change the interface and demo to the same initial capital letters. We are prompted to add a semicolon at the end, so we add it. Now the compilation has passed. Next, we burn into the development board to see. Power on the module and the serial port as output the field we want to configure. There are no more demo interface messages. And the CAT Studio log prints out the relevant information. That means the changes we just made have taken effect. This video is just an introduction. Please refer to the latest documentation for actual operation. Through this video, you may have a preliminary understanding of the Open SDK of Cat1 module. If you find it helpful, please feel free to like and follow. If you have other related Open SDK issues, you can also leave a message in the comment section or contact us. See you next time.